Can I not marry audio web novel by chapter 50? This round, the president gained victory. After the kiss, Du Lacey was unable to catch her breath and fell into the water. The moment she fell in, using the fastest speed to assess the situation, she tried to grab onto anything and ultimately did not hesitate to grab the president's collar, so as a result the president was also mercilessly pulled into the water. Plop, plop, plop. If you have to ask why on earth there's three, plop, sound when only two people fell in. The reason is very simple, the boatman upon seeing his guest falling into the water, if he, himself didn't also follow it was unjustifiable, so he quickly dive in. In a split second, there were three dumplings floating in the calm water. Du Lacey finally understood the meaning of a, nightmare becoming reality, however her current situation is an upgraded version. A little chick doesn't know how to swim, it was no exception for Du Lacey either, in the water like a mother hen swallowing water, she was bobbing up and down constantly in the water, after numerous times the president finally dragged her back on board. At this moment, the boatman also returned to the boat, the three of them were thoroughly soaked, especially Du Lacey, whose wet long hair covered most of her face, only revealing a pair of shock eyes, coupled with her white dress, under the tranquil moonlight it appeared Sadako have come back to life. Seeing she's okay, Lian Jun breathed a sigh of relief, wanting to berate her a word or two, however seeing her frightened expression, he couldn't bear to criticize her so he finally swallowed the words he wanted to say and quietly took off his coat, covering the wet and clingy clothing on her body. Her being this way, only he can see it. The unexpected drowning incident, besides scaring Du Lacey enough to choke, it also produced a series of late complications. First, the next day after drowning, Du Lacey gloriously caught a cold. The cold triggered a series of cough, fever, dizziness and nausea. In short the mother hen turned into a drenched chicken, the drenched chicken turned into a plagued chicken, the plagued chicken can only lie in bed continuously groaning. Secondly, because she became a plagued chicken, their Venice trip was completely disrupted, he originally intended to take her to the beach on the second day, now it has to change into a hospital. Others' honeymoon were to sightsee the attractions, however Du Lacey's honeymoon was spent in the hospital, it's also considered a major undertaking. Finally, amongst the unfortunate there was a sheer luck, the plague left as fast as it came, in less than two days' time, she the plague chicken became the frisky little hen. After much trouble, the president took the frisky little hen to leave Venice, taking off to the next destination. The next destination was Florence. Love, you will always be a bright star in my head. If I unfortunately die, I will become a firefly, in this garden next to the grass roots. I'll somberly fly, flying from dusk to the middle of the night, flying in the middle of the night to the break of dawn, only when there isn't a cloud present in the sky. Every day I hope to see you the unchanged star, I wish you would shine for me, through the night, through the day and through the love of consonants, a night in Florence by Zujimo. Within Zujimo's poetry, Fei Lengkui, is also known as Florence, like the translation, this city of poetry is filled with color and full of classical flavor. In the birthplace of Renaissance, under the visible blue sky and white clouds every corner was filled with colorful buildings, dark green shutters with scarlet roof. Just taking a stroll was like living in a vast museum of art. Leonardo da Vinci, Dante, Michelangelo, hearing these names for a thousand times, one day to suddenly have such close contact made Du Lacey feel super weird. The station was originally more calm than their trip to Venice, there wasn't any drowning nor catching a cold, however that night before leaving Florence to Rome, a clique event occurred. That night at the hotel, Lian Jun was in the bathroom taking a shower, while Du Lacey leisurely sat on bed sifting through the photos they took in these past few days, reminiscing was very fun. Suddenly, the camera ran out of battery, she got off from the bed to find the charger, searching her own belongings to the president's, after a long time she still couldn't find the charger, however she instead found a red velvet box. Strange. Why does this box look so familiar? Curiously, Du Lacey opened the box to take a peek and was completely dumbfounded. This, isn't this the diamond ring that's worth two million? When Lian Jun finished showering and came out from the bathroom, he found Du Lacey had a weird expression on her face. Upon seeing her holding the ring, all of a sudden he finally understood what was happening. This ring, originally Lian Jun intended to take advantage while they were on holiday to find a proper time give it to her, however he didn't think she would uncover it herself, it appears his ears are not going to have a rest. Sure enough, upon seeing him, Du Lacey angrily placed the ring in front of him, this, what is this? Lian Jun calmly replied, a ring. What's with this attitude? Du Lacey angrily shouted, this is not just a ring. Then what is it? It's a ring valued of two million dollars. But isn't that a ring? Du Lacey become angry from embarrassment, I don't care, give me an explanation, why is this diamond ring with you? Wasn't it lost? That time if wasn't because she thought she lost the diamond ring, why would she so easily sell herself? For the president to do so, it's simply forcing marriage. Too hateful. But this initiator of evil gave an indifferent expression and shrugged his shoulders, it was lost, and I found it back. Then why didn't you say sir? 
You didn't ask. You. Do Lacey grit her teeth in anger, however the word she wanted to say didn't come out. This proves that the president absolutely have the ability to infuriate a person to death. Unable to outspeak him, it best if she didn't speak at all, do Lacey grit her teeth, stamp her feet and harden her heart saying, I'm not going to pay any attention to you now. Thus, the events of the diamond ring suddenly escalated to a cold war, until the two of them were on the train to Rome, do Lacey was still in a fit of anger, not wanting to speak to him. Since she refused to speak, Lian Zhan was also not in a hurry, he put on calm appearance seeing how long she can endure this, besides once they arrive in Italy, except him, no one can communicate with her. See this girl would be suffocated to death. However this time, the president seems to underestimate the powerful force of the economic globalization, China has a population of 1 billion and 300 million, it's easy to encounter a Chinese in a foreign countries. This, Du Lacey stumbled upon. You guys are from China. Hearing the familiar language, Du Lacey's eyes who haven't spoken for most of the day sparkled faint green like a weasel. You're also Chinese, she asked, smiling. Hello, my name is Wang Lu, I'm a student studying abroad here. The little girl named Wang Lu was very passionate, did you guys come here for a tour? He is your boyfriend. Du Lacey glanced at Lian Jun, out of spite said, no. Besides, she is telling the truth, he's not her boyfriend, just her husband. Lian Jun glanced at her and did not speak. Oh, I thought you were lovers. Wang Lu said, secretly glanced at Lian Jun, seemingly to be contemplating on something. Mind if we sit together. Finally there was someone she could communicate with, naturally Du Lacey exceedingly welcomed it, please sit down, sit down. The train ride they were on, was relatively well known in Italy. The, star of the European, is clean, fast and the service attitude is also very good. Although it required ticket seating, but since it's off-peak season there weren't many people, naturally there were more empty seats. On the train, because of anger, Du Lacey deliberately did not sit next to Lian Jun, instead she picked the position opposite him, originally she intended to do so that the two of them can be separated, she did not expect to see the president's calm expression which made her more and more angry. Fortunately, she met Wang Lu, in addition, with her was a handsome Italian male who had brown hair and blue eyes. The two people sitting down, Wang Lu chose to sit beside Lian Jun, while the Italian guy sat beside Du Lacey. This is my classmate Michelle. Wang Lu introduced. Hello. I'm Michelle, my Chinese name is Lai Fu. Lai Fu equals blessing, although his Chinese was incompetent, however Du Lacey was shocked and understood. Wow. Foreigners taking a Chinese name have a really TMD, one personality, why didn't he call himself Wang Kai? Wang Kai equals prosperous wealth, you know how to speak Chinese. Lai Fu heartily laughed, well, I know a little, what's your name? My name is Du Lei Lei. Using a false name, Lian Jun who sat on the opposite side half unconsciously curved his lips. Lei Lei, you look very beautiful. She knew Italians were passionate people, however she did not expect them to flatter others so confidently, Du Lacey shyly smiled, you're too kind, you flatter me. Where, your beauty, hair, nose, eyes and ears, are all beautiful. Du Lacey was truly embarrassed, this brother's Chinese is really not good. Michelle is still learning Chinese, some words he is still not very clear. After Wang Lu finished explaining, she used Italian to communicate with Michelle, this is when Michelle finally reacted and smiled awkwardly toward Du Lacey, I'm sorry, Lei Lei. Du Lacey hurriedly waved, it's nothing. Like this, during the two hours train ride, three people were talking, laughing and bustling. Except the president who just looked on coldly, occasionally Wang Lu would say a word or two with him and he would just reply with a word or two, making the beautiful girl truly embarrassed. When they get off the next train stop, they will have arrive in Rome and have to separate. Wang Lu haven't gotten the chance to speak much to the handsome man, so naturally she was unwilling to part. She whispered to the Michelle, since you are a tourist, why don't we guide you? Besides we have nothing on today. Lian Jun frowned, wanting to refuse, however Du Lei Si was the first to respond, okay. Okay, there's someone to talk to her, surely the president will die of anger, it's good ah. As a result, the group of two became a group of four, each emerge in their own thoughts. When the four of them lined up to exist the tram, they weren't aware there was a puddle of water ahead. This puddle wasn't big, those with longer legs were easily able to cross over, so Wang Lu and Michelle who walked in front easily passed, however once it was Du Lacey's turn she was in a dilemma. What's the easiest way to cross this? Should she go around? As she was hesitating, a body suddenly fly past, then she also flew past as well. More accurately it should be her in the president's embrace flying past at this moment, don't mention Du Lacey, even Wang Lu and Michelle who were on the side were dumbfounded, how do one sing this song ah? Meaning how did this happen? After Lian Jun brought Du Lacey over, he said, take out our hand. What? Are you doing? Stretch it out. He repeated, Du Lacey involuntarily stretched out her hand. 
your right hand. So she stretched out her right hand. Moments later, Du Lacey felt an unknown sensation on her ring finger. When she regained her senses she found the diamond ring was on her ring finger already. It was precisely the two million diamond ring. Okay, let's go, Lian Jun said, naturally putting his arms around her shoulders, and moving forward. Wait, there's still Wang Lu. Du Lacey quickly looked around, where's Wang Lu and Lai Fu? There wasn't even a Wang Kai in sight. This round, the president gains victory.